Hey everybody, it's Adam from Encounter Wargaming and today we are going to do a painting video on this Hive City mansion piece that we built uh, last week. And so let's jump in and check it out. So last week we finished building the Hive City Mansion from Tabletop Scenics, a very cool kit. If you uh, got one of these yourself and you're interested in a little how-to video or just some nice uh, quick tips on how to build MDF terrain because you know there's some little um, nicks and nacks to it, um, then go back and check out that video. Um, but for those of you who are interested in getting this guy painted up, we are going to paint it to match our Hive City Chapel that we painted uh, last month or a couple months ago um, because they are in a matching set. And so very excited to get this guy painted up. We're going to do some rattle canning, we're going to do some airbrush, dry brush, washes, weathering, all that stuff. And so we'll get a good idea um, of a wide range of techniques that you can use to paint your, your MDF terrain. And so um, for the most part, the, the philosophy is going to be let's paint it quick, simple, so we can get it on the table, but still have it look very effective. Um, the, the detail on this is fantastic. And so we definitely want this guy to stand out. So we'll definitely go a little bit above and beyond without the not too laborious so that we get bogged down and never get these projects finished. Because ideally, um, we're doing we're doing stuff like this um, for uh, for a whole table and so you'll have a bunch of these things and you'll, you need to be able to paint them in a reasonable amount of time so that you don't uh, end up with a pile of unpainted terrain like like can happen sometimes and so uh, all right so let's just jump in and do step number one okay so here is the building and all the pieces that we left separate so that we could paint them separately and uh, I originally left them still on the uh, the frames or the sprue because uh, they have the numbering on there and then I realized you know what like that might cause me some more problems later so what uh, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna punch them all out and then set them up on a on a board um, and just prime them not worry about it because I'll just I'll just f fiddle around and find find the spot where they all go. Um, now I think in the instructions there's a set order and so I'll uh, I'll figure I'll figure that out when I get there. Um, I'll just look at the instructions and just kind of dry fit all the pieces until I get it right and uh, that just might be the way to do it. It might take an extra couple minutes of assembly but I think it'll save some time in the long run for painting. Um, so that's just the boons and curses of doing hobby stuff. So. There we go, you can do it like I do it. If you have a better way, you know, let me know in a comment below or whatever. Um, e actually, you know what I could do is as I pull them out and put them on the board, I could Sharpie the number beside it. That might be smart. Um, we'll see how that goes. So um, what we're gonna do is just gonna do some rattle can priming um, and then just get a nice even base coat uh, over everything to start and uh, and work up from there. And so for, for these bits, uh, I want them to be all metal. So I have a primer. Um, Army Painter Rattle Can Primer, and it's a gun metal color. So nice, like a like a darker metal, um, which would be nice. Airbrush up a little bit brighter after, and then uh, a great uh, a great base coat for terrain is just this um, the flat red primer. It's actually very very brown, um, nice matte spray paint. This is Rust-Oleum Painters Touch two times coverage. Um, and so guys, the reason I start off with rattle can priming is because this stuff's really porous and so it just soaks up paint like crazy. Um, so I, I definitely advise using the rattle cans um, so that you don't waste a bunch of your, your hobby paint um, or, or like brush on paint and stuff. So you get a nice even coat and uh, and yeah, you don't waste you don't waste paint just brushing it on and having it soak up and having it look uneven. This will get a nice even coat. Um, if you if you really felt like you needed to, you could maybe do two coats, but you're probably good just with one coat. Um, now I will do this outside and not on camera. Um, so I'd advise you to do the same well ventilated area. So I'm going to jump outside. It's simple guys. You don't need to be shown what to do. Um, it's just spray painting. So get it all covered. Uh, I'm, I may cut and show you guys, I may set these up on a board and I might show that to you. So here we go. Let's do that. And I thought through a little bit more and I figured, ah, I've got a great system. We'll just lay all the pieces out, write a number on the board, and Bob's your uncle. Turns out we're going to take some spray paint and <laughs> spray paint right over top of all these numbers. So I just took a little piece of tape and covered up the number uh, so we could spray paint, rip the piece of tape off, the number will be right there beside the piece, and that'll be 
brilliant. So there we go. All this stuff's going to be silver on this board here. We'll just take this outside, rattle cam prime silver on top, and take our building out and get that flat red primer on top. Let's go do it. We'll be back in a flash. So there is everything spray, spray primed. And uh, what I did too was did like a little top down on this guy with this uh, nutmeg color here. And I stole this uh, recipe from uh, Ash Barker over at Grill Miniature Games. It's just a nice little easy way to uh, to make these buildings look simple and nice. So when you, when you turn them, the underneath, so you got the red, right? And then most of the flat panels will have this nice nutmeg color. And so we got to do a little bit more work yet to make this really pop, but this is a good start and base to work off of with the airbrush and a little bit of dry brushing and weathering later on. Um, so there we go. And I also got all my fence bits and metallic -y bits all metal. So there you go. And let's see, did my numbers, did they preserve? Aha, they did. Fabulous. Worked perfectly. So now we can go to the instructions if we need to later and we still know which pieces are which. Um, so let's see, let's put this aside for a minute and get our highlights done on all the metal. And so we'll get these in the brush booth. Um, just one at a time, do a nice little airbrush with a brighter silver. So here we are with one of my pieces and uh, I loaded up my airbrush with some Vallejo Model Air Silver. Super, super bright silver. Be perfect for our case right here. And so now I'm just gonna get the raised parts and the outside edges some of the middle bits with it for some nice little nice little highlights and there we go nice and simple a nice little top down and so let's get a little bit closer there so you can see just like a nice little fade dark to light in there some of these edges here a little bit lighter and the tips of the arrows a little bit as well and so there you go so that's basically all you'll need um, to get some nice simple highlighting done right there on both sides uh, Tips tips of those a little bit brighter beauty. So some nice dark to light. It's uh, it's subtle, but it's effective um, And there you go. I think that I think that's all we need So go ahead and do that on all your pieces actually. Ooh, before we before we cancel out here Let's do these uh, these round gubbins so Just kind of yeah, we'll get like a little bit of a top down right there get the center of this little circle thing here top down on that guy Let's even that out a little bit better beauties cool so there you go so just like the middle of the beams the middle of this thing let's get this edge right here a little bit more beauties so there you go some nice dark to lights on the metal bits right there Cool, so go ahead and do that on all of your silver bits and we will be back in a snap. All right, so all the silver bits are done and they're just sitting there on the desk waiting to be glued on. And uh, now I got the building here. And so because this is so flat, the uh, the double layers of rattle can priming um, aren't as prominent as the, the last building. The last one just had so many layers of detail. So what we're gonna do is we're definitely gonna need to come in and airbrush this one just like we did the last one. So what we're gonna do is I've just mixed up a, uh, a mix of these two colors. We got two game air colors from Vallejo. We got leather brown and bone white. And I've just mixed the two together to get uh, kind of a, a lighter cream lighter cream color. Um, this is just a bottle that I mixed one up in. And yeah, so it's just, it's just a nice highlight. And so what we're gonna do is just come in with the airbrush and, uh, and just, just get a little, just get a little highlight going. Why not? On the edges of everything. Around all the windows. All right. Yeah. Cool edges, corners, and stuff. Beauties. Nice edge right here. So there you go. So that's that's really starting to pop right there. Not too much effort. Just a little bit. And it really makes a big difference. Oh yeah. That's great. So we'll just get this whole face here, and then I'll let you guys do the rest of the building on your own. There's a little embellishments here. I think I got a tiny clog in there, so we can't clear that. 
All right. Well, in either case, go ahead. You see what the you see what we're going for. I did that in just a couple seconds. Um, so go ahead and do that on the entire building, uh, all the way around. And the floor we're going to do a different color. So don't worry about that as much. I'm going to do it um, do it like black and gray to match my Adeptus Titanicus building roofs. And um, then we're going to come in after we're going to do some stuff on the windows too. But for now, just go ahead and do that nice highlight all the way around this building. Be right back. And we're back. So as you can see, the building is done on all sides. Just highlights all the way around. Give it some definition. Make it pop. And that is really what we're after. So quick and easy. Just take a few minutes to do that. And so the next step um, of what we're going to do is I'm actually, I just want the roof to be like a black highlighted gray. Um, and so I just took some of my airbrush black primer, shoved it in there. And now we're just going to cover this, uh, cover this roof. So here we are. Let's not get too crazy about it. Now, now here's the thing. So I've, I've, you can see I've taped the chimney. I've taped this little thing. Um, the angles are going to be what matters, right? So if I try and come at this and spray this way on top of the roof, I'm obviously, I'm going to hit this wall. But if I spray off of the back edge, right, I can spray this way and the excess paint will just shoot off the edge and not hit this wall. So you can really use the angles to your advantage. And so that's what I'm going to do. Um, there you go. And shoot right into the tape because the tape is protecting that piece there. All right. Cool. So, I mean, it's just making it flat. So go ahead. See there, you can see it's like a nice clean line. So none of the black comes down over onto the next piece. So go ahead, finish the top and we will be right back. Cool. We're back. So I've done the top. Now what I also did is I went and I blacked out the windows. We'll come back later and maybe make them silver or something. <clears throat> so what we're going to do now is come in with some Vallejo model air, um, black gray and pop that in the airbrush and just do some easy little highlights on the roof. Nothing too complicated, but uh, just want to make it pop a little bit, have a little definition. And so, see it's still a little bit wet, but you know, black's pretty gracious. So I'm just gonna go with the pattern and just get every little dot, every little tile. go right in the middle of each dot right in the middle of each tile that should be too perfect but you know should be decent all right see I'm just going quick Well, there, you get the idea, right? Um, missed that one there. And I'm just going to pull back and do a light fade over the whole thing just to kind of blend it all in a little bit. So it was looking a little bit dotty and spotty, especially in that light on the camera. But there we go. So you can see, yeah, maybe a little faded in a little bit more. There you go. It's looking a little more natural. So go ahead and uh and do that on the whole thing and we will be right back in a snap okay so the roof is done you know a quick look at that and so just dotted the gray in there and then pulled back with the airbrush and faded it in and so just a nice cool little roof We're, we'll, we'll weather that up after but for now what i want to do is just get uh get these windows going so i've got <clears throat> what color is it here? This is the Vallejo <clears throat> Gun Metal Metallic uh, Air Color. And it's just a nice darker kind of silver color. Now you could paint these with uh, by hand brush if you wanted to. But um, may as well start now. Now, just a word of warning. The silvers have a, have a way of speckling like crazy. So really just aim for the center and then work your way outwards so that you don't get silver all over the walls. And it'll just give you a nice, like fade color there too. So.
Yeah, that's exactly what we want. So, and work my way out. Oh, it really works well with those graded windows. Oh, it looks so nice. Beautiful. So now if we just get in there with a little bit of that one brighter silver, it's really going to pop. Cool, so you can see that's that's exactly the effect that we want to go for. And so now, why don't you go ahead and just do all the windows and we'll be right back with the brighter silver. So those are all done. Now we'll just come back in with that Vallejo Model Air Silver and do it one more time. And this is obviously a highlight, so just do uh, the very, very inside and just get a little bit. There you go. And you see the effect that we're going for. Just one more layer of highlight. Super easy to do, gives great contrast. And uh, there you go. So go ahead and do all of your windows. And we're back. And I think it is time to glue on all of the roof railings here. And so I've just dry fitted the first stage. And so we got uh, pieces 76 to 79 laid out and ready to go. I've already dry fitted them. And so we'll just throw on a little bit of glue. And I just got some super glue here. All right. Show that on. Now, once we've, once we've, oh, just a quick note on these. Um, you'll see there is a side with these like little lines on the top there um, and lines. And the other side has nothing. It's just blank. So the side that's blank is the inside. The sign with the little lines goes on the outside. Um, yeah, so it should be fairly simple. Just squeeze these pieces on there. Uh, this guy needs a little convincing. We dry fitted it earlier and he needed convincing earlier too. But there we go. We've got her. Beautiful. <clears throat> Put this little guy on. Cool. I think what I might do is use the bottom end of a paintbrush to just push this guy on there. Beautiful. <clears throat> cool. And just keep going. This is one really helpful part about doing the sub assemblies because now you can see like we have these three different colors there and instead of sitting there painting them all by hand, you can see the color differ differentiation um, comes out very easily because we spray painted them separately. So one of the many benefits of just, just coming up with a simple little system to make things go quicker. Um, so this stage is really important. So you need uh, piece 80, which those are 81. Mm hmm. 80G, 81G. Ah, yeah. So, yeah, these guys here. We got them. Beautiful. So, it says do pieces 80 and 81 first. And those are the little, uh, you know, these guys here. So let's glue them in. I wonder what the difference is between 80 and 81. Do not know. I think this wall is sticking out a little bit from the roof, which is why it's a little bit troublesome. We could, if we need to, get a knife in there and make the peg a little bit smaller. Let's see what a little elbow grease can't do. Get that paintbrush in there again. Ah, beauties. There's the first one in there. I want to get it tight on there so it doesn't cause problems for this piece going across, but let's do the next one. <clears throat> and because so many of these fit on pretty snug, I'm not like too worried. Normally, you don't want 
to like glue paint because the paint could just pull off, right? And it won't have a very good contact point. Um, but these fit on pretty snug, so not too worried about stuff. All right, so then we're set up to put on piece number 82, which is there, there it is. <clears throat> I'll just dry fit this guy, oh yeah. Oh yeah, we'll be able to get that guy in there. Alrighty. Whoop, had a little bit of snapping. Don't want that. <laughs> Don't want to break the piece. Almost broke it in half. Aha, popped right on. Beauties, once we got the right angle and lined it up perfectly, boom, just pop, pop. Easy. All right, so now I think that is the only one that needs to go in in a particular order. So you can then go ahead and just follow Oh no, there are more that go in a particular order. So, ah, yeah, let's just keep going together. Spend a little time together, why not? So, hmm, we need piece number 84. So it says do 87, 88, and 89 first. Oh, okay, that's, that, never mind, that's talking about uh, this piece right here. So it's saying assemble this first. And so, yeah, actually, why don't, why don't we do that together? Um, beauty. So you kind of have these lines here to, uh, to line up, um, to line up your piece with, which is super helpful. And uh, let's do that. Get some glue on there, no problems. No problems. Okay, just line those up nicely. Wonderful. And that sticks on just like that. Cool, so you get a nice, nice 3D piece of detail on there. Adds another layer of depth, which is really awesome. <clears throat> and that's what these, this, these guys are really good at, is just get, making sure these terrain kits have some depth to them. Because that uh, can be the trick with MDF terrain is um is that you kind of you can tend to you can tend to lose uh, some of the depth okay let's see here this is 84 but that's that is definitely not going on there huh Five and eighty-six. Well, let me go and find my pieces. I think I found eighty-six actually. Let me go find all my pieces, do some dry fitting, and we'll be right back for this next step. And we're back. So it turns out I just missed one piece on the stage before. So I was trying to stick this piece in this slot. Ha! <laughs> pays to read the directions. So let's just keep plugging away, getting all these guys on. So we missed 83, that's all it was. And see, it fits in nice, got 84 on. We need 85. It's this tiny little guy, it's like a corner, corner piece. And this fits just on the outside of the piece previous to it. Nice little joining of the two sides there, or of the, uh, of the corners. Goodies. Man, this is really coming together. I'm excited. All right. Let's get my face right on top of this thing here. I think what I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna use the cutting trick on this one, because this piece, this wall, I didn't quite get snug and now it's causing me problems. So, 
This will just be an easy little fix. Just make this peg a little bit smaller. There, now see how you do with that. If you have to do that too. Boom. Got that one fit. Ah, looks like I need to do both as a result because now the whole thing's shifted over. So let's just do that. Cool. Nice easy fix. Boom. No worries. No worries. All right. So we keep plugging away. Um, looks like maybe didn't write some of my numbers. So, oh, maybe this is it right here. This is 91. Yeah, it looks like that fits perfectly right there. Beauties. Man, this building is huge. Love it. It's going to be perfect for my new knight army. Block line of sight. Alright. Now let's keep, uh, keep plugging away. Going around. So 92. Go right beside the chimney. A in first. Oh, well, hopefully it doesn't give us too much trouble if we already glued in the chimney. Beauties. Beauties. All right. 97 is now the one that makes this corner here. guys 98b and then we have two 98a's I think it might be I think this guy might be the B nope not nope nope this one's 82 where does 82 come in no it's a 97 no it's not what is this Ugh, they're all so similar. Just a little bit off. Okay, looks like we're going to have to do a dry fit. Looks like that one fits perfectly there. Which means this one is probably the one for here. Yeah, because these two are the same. And the instructions say that these two here are the same. The beauties of dry fitting. Um, we also have these guys, this one here to do as we, as we pass by this corner. So we can just glue this guy right right there. So let's go ahead and do that while we pass this corner. All right. Now we just want to make sure we line it up in the right spot. Nice little extra detail. Beautiful. Awesome. Okay, so we got these guys dry fitted on. Let's rip them off, glue them, and then we're good to go. Last two pieces. So for the weathering, I think what we're going to do is we're going to come in with the sponge like we did on the other building. Just do a little bit of uh, brown sponging. Maybe some slight silver sponging. We're definitely going to come in and uh, do some rust again. Because um, that really worked out nicely. Beauties. All right. So now our building is fully complete. And so, yeah, that is, that's looking good. Oh, so sweet to see with the roof on. 
yeah, that's that's brilliant. That's what you want to see. That is an amazing kit. So let's get set up to do, um, I guess, all of our sponging first. So yeah, let's do that. I actually realized before we go too much further, we need to make sure we get our dry brush on. Um, so we're going to do this the same way we did uh, the last building. And so I got out my just bright beige uh, Screaming Skull, looks like, from G-Dub. Got out my dry brush here. And uh, what we're going to do is just kind of streak downwards to, uh, to add to our weathering effect later. And yeah, it's going to catch some of those edges, catch some of those bricks give a little bit of a streaky effect. Just make some, some of that pop. Cool. I'm really focus on some of those bottom edges especially. But you know, all around. All around. Especially these door details here is perfect. So you can see right here, right? That like streaky bit coming off the bottom really is going to sell this whole thing here. Boom. There, that's exactly what we're going for. Get this hand railing. Beauties. And these steps are going to be perfect. inside of this railing. Boom, not bad at all. So you can see it's just adding a little bit of pop, a little bit of magic to uh, all the edges, all the details. So we can get a close up there. Boom, so there you go. It's really adding to that more natural concrete brick look. Um, so there you go. So why don't you go ahead and do that on the entire building and then we'll be right back. And we're back. So now that that's all done, let's go back onto our sponging. So I got a little sponge here and I just have some brown paint, some dried bark on my palette. Um, now the last building, I sponged up the whole thing. I, I've decided against that because this is all brick pattern. Um, so what I'm going to do is, uh, is just do my sponging on the roof like I did for my Titanicus buildings. Um, and, and then we'll call it a day at that. So just random patterns, nice dark sponge chipping, uh, focusing on kind of the middle area. Um, we're definitely going to get a path coming out of here to probably up to here. So I'll focus on the middle of the floor, creating a little bit of what, what seems to be like a worn down pathway between the two. In the middle. And this definitely, this will be like a worn out area over here. as people come up out of the hatch there from what's probably the attic or the top floor of the mansion. And we'll just scatter some in some other places. Focus a lot on the stairs and the bottom of the stairs and then get it going at the top here. All right, maybe a little more scattered He's standing at this little perch here. Why not? Cool. All right. So that's good enough. That's good enough for that. Awesome. And now we'll just take another little piece of sponge and just get some, we'll just get a little bit of silver going on top of this. Why not? It's just that nice bright silver will really make this pop. Yeah, here's my piece of sponge. I actually want a little bit finer tip. I got some more control, so I'll just rip some pieces off. Great. All right, let's get that silver paint down. It'll dab this one off a lot more. And just be a lot more controlled about where I put it. There you go. Focusing on these corners. Get that path 
the way going, really focus in there. Okay. A little bit here. Up at this top perch. Cover up these bitties. All right, good. So that's probably that's probably all we'll need. And then, uh, yeah, let's move on to the next step. I think we're gonna do some um, some water uh, some water marks and stuff on here. So let's let's switch over and do that. And we're back. And I just got some good old Agrax Earthshade right here. And what I'll do is I'll just uh, find like little cracks and corners and just drag some down right there. Put in the crack and then drag the brush down to get that little streak. All right, so there's like a yeah, these window ledges are actually perfect for all this, and so are these cracks of brick here. Sweet, get the bottom of this one. Streak it, come in with my finger if I need to, to um, kind of dampen out the look of it. If I put it on too stark or it's like not looking the way I want, not streaky enough, just take your finger and streak it down and that'll help it a lot. Especially come from underneath here, it's dripping down from the top there. Oh yeah, so this will go perfect, my finger. Bam, nice, so there you go. You kind of get the idea of the effect that we're going for. So just get all this cracks, crevices, and then just streak it down. Boom, just like that. So go nuts, go wild, do it on the whole thing, do a bunch. Actually, let, let's do some of this door, yeah. And then I'll leave you guys to do it yourself while I finish this off. Yeah, I get tons of stuff on this door. Why not? Stuff just pooling up around here in these corners. Beauties of this lock and these hinges. And this kind of Aquila thing here. Yeah. Now you can go as light and as heavy as you want with this. And so. You want your building to look old, like super dilapidated, just go nuts and do multiple layers of this and to darken it up and everything if you want. Um, it really is, really is all up to you. And so just have fun, have fun getting the look you want. All right. There, now that's doing a second layer on some of these, really darken it up. <clears throat> Beautiful. All right. So there you go. You can see some of that streakiness coming in there. Get that weathering effect of this old, this old mansion. And so just go ahead and keep doing more of that. And we'll be back after you have some fun with that. And we're back. So look at that. We got the whole building all streaked up. Looking old. Starting to look, starting to look dirty. And so now what I want to do is just come in and do a little bit of rusting. And so we got this nice... Uh, metallic um, fence up here and I just got myself in the airbrush a little bit of uh, Reaper Master Series Harvest Brown. Um, so I can just go into the airbrush, use a little reducer and so I'm just going to do uh, just airbrush spots of, of rust. Um, one this gives color to the piece. It's a nice orange in here, the rusting, um, but also helps add to the weathering effect that we got going on. So some of the windows as well. Oh yeah, that's really gonna look good. Sweet, so just do up some more. You can drag it uh, down onto the building um, just to have the rust like flowing down with those watermarks and stuff. 
And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to come in later and we're going to do some real bright streaking with, uh, with orange as well. So go ahead and do that. Get these nice metal pieces that are kind of hanging on the side of this building here. Really get the bottom of this guy. Streak it down like that. Awesome. That's looking really cool. Perfect. That's exactly what we need. Sell this. Oh, yeah. This building is really going to pop by the end of it. So there you go. You kind of get the idea where I'm going for. Go for the corners. Go for the places the water would build up and run. Um, go for the low spots. A little be sparing if you're going to go up high. And uh, yeah, just have fun with it. So there you go, guys. Do that on the entire building. And we'll be right back in a second. And so we are nicely weathered all the way around. And what we're going to do is just come in with uh, with one brighter orange. Um, this is also Reaper Master Series. Uh, this is the orange brown. There you go. And, uh, and so I'll just do slightly smaller um, spottings. Just to give that some depth, give it some highlight inside the, uh, the, the harvest brown that you've already done. You can see how it just really makes it pop. Add some depth, dynamic to it, and some highlight. And so it's subtle, but it's effective. Um, when you look at when you look at any color, it's not just one color in real life. It's a it's a whole smorgasbord and array of gradients and colors together. And so you can see how this is really making this this rust pop out there and look a little bit more realistic. Um, all right, so let's finish that up. Just do a couple more examples for you. Yeah, you can see it's just making it pop that little bit more and giving that a little more dynamic. So, okay, go ahead, go do that on the whole thing. And then we will get some liquid rust going on just to finish that rust off. And we are almost done. We got our rust spots there. And now I've just taken a little bit of GW Rizza Rust, a nice bright orange rust. I've watered it down a whole bunch on the palette. And so now we're going to make uh, little streaks with this um, just to really sell this rust here. It's a little bit chunkier. You can streak it again. There you go. See that effect right there? Nice, bright, streaky. Awesome. Let's do a couple more examples for you. And that chunkiness in there is really going to help sell this. Gives another layer of texture. And boom. And really, we have not spent that much time on this uh, building altogether. So to spend three layers, to spend like three colors, Worth the rust is maybe a little extra, but you know, there aren't too many colors on this. There's not a lot of details that we can't, uh, that we really have to like spend time like focusing on. And so why the heck not just spend a little extra time where you can to make it look right, you know? All right, cool. So there you go. There's that. Now I've been uh, just these like these um, mesh windows here. It looks really good if you just drop a couple extra little rust streaks in those. I find anyways. So go for it. Go wild and crazy and just have fun with this, man. This is this is the fun part of painting. Making these things look realistic and you know you kind of you don't really put them. Like, oh, this this rust would totally build up here. I mean, you, you, you do a little bit of that kind of thinking, but for the most part, you're like, all right, where would this look cool? And you just pick some spots and you just make it look good. <clears throat> Sweet, so there you go. So you can see, just adds that one more dimension of, of pop, of excitement, um, bring some color to this piece. And yeah, it's starting to look really good. So do this on the whole thing. And I think we're going to do one last thing after that and this, and then we're going to call this piece done.
See you in a moment. And we're back, and so we're all done, all of that rusting, all the way around. Last thing I wanted to do was just put uh, a little bit of, just like maybe a, of, a, of a defined dirt trail on the, um, on the chipping up here. So, kind of coming across this way, up, up onto the steps, maybe up over here. So that just, just a little bit of a, kind of a more traveled pathway over, over the, um, the roof. It's there. I think it's uh, pretty much done. So what I want to do is let's set up both buildings next to each other and compare them and just take a nice, nice pan back shot of this guy to see what it looks like and do some size comparisons. Okay. And there it is all finished. This is exciting. So it's a big building here. Um, I'm going to show you all the way around. Got some nice weathering effects, some good popping rust coming out of those metal bits and those windows. This is a soft, this is a great piece of terrain. I mean, this is, this is everything you need for 8th edition 40k right now. Just a big chunk that blocks line of sight. Um, it still has uh, areas for infantry on the top and uh, and could count as like an enclosed ruins for ITC which is perfect um, those are super in right now and they're actually really handy they really make combat units effective and I highly highly recommend using the enclosed ruins rules um, all right and so so there it is so now I want to compare with the other building that uh, Tabletop Scenic sent us in the series and this is the Hive City Chapel that we made and so there you go you can see there's quite a difference oops quite a difference in the size there so this is about I don't know what two and a half times as big um, so first off I mean if you remove the roof it's like double the height almost and so I guess 50% larger with the roof on um, and definitely the the footprint all the way around so like here let's see is this helpful broke it there you go you can kind of see the the footprint it takes up so it's like it's like one two two complete ones in its in its footprint um, so just totally smash that up let's put that back on easy and the roof back over here okay don't be silly Adam all right great so there you go so there's that building and now let's do some size comparisons with models um, so these are so I have a standard like Terminator size figure, Grandmaster Valdis right here. And you can see like this building is huge. Like this window alone, this Terminator could walk through that window right there, right? Uh, we got Cypher here. Cypher's on a 32 mil base. Cypher can easily stand up on that stairwell. I got Grayfax here. She can easily perch up top. And so there you go. You can easily fit, I don't know, you could probably fit a squad of 20, 32 mil bases up on top there, which is really exciting. That's a, that's a lot of real estate, and that is going to go a long way um, on your table. Now, I do want to show you the Imperial Knights. So, got those space marines there. So here's the Hive City Chapel, and here's the Imperial Knight. And so the, you can see the Imperial Knight it's not quite covered, right? So you got about, you got a couple inches here sticking up, up the top of it. Um, but if we move this guy out of the way completely, you can see that the Imperial Knight could easily hide behind there and completely be blocked of line of sight from a lot of things. And that's, that makes this terrain piece a perfect centerpiece for the board. Um, easily blocking a knight. There's a lot of strategic options that come when you can take one of your biggest, baddest units and hide it right behind. So, so that is definitely begging to be used on the battlefield. I mean, the, the Hive City Chapel is totally worth it for hiding land raiders, rhinos, squads of, of infantry. And so definitely, obviously, recommend. You, I mean, you can't have all buildings of one size, right? So it's great to have some variety. Um, it makes, this is, this is the game. This is what gives you all your different strategic uh, options as you as you run around the battlefield so there you have it guys let's uh let's wrap this video up well that's everything for today you guys have seen the painting of the hive city mansion all ready to go from 
priming to tabletop it's uh that's a good looking building i think you guys will be super happy with that on your tabletop and it'll it'll add to any kind of board that you already have out there if you just you know picked up a couple pieces and threw it on but it also go good if you bought a whole matching set and so shout out to tabletop scenics thank you guys for sending that down to us so that we could show it off it's a really cool building and i hope you guys enjoyed us uh, going through it um yeah guys if you have any comments questions cool ways to to paint mdf terrain i'd love to hear it so just comment down in the video and uh i guess that's it for today so let's sign off folks if you liked that video hit subscribe right there if you really liked it you can jump down and hit the link to patreon below where for as little as a dollar a video you can support everything that we do here at the channel battle reports terrain tutorials uh painting tutorials all sorts of fun hobby stuff going on here in encounter wargaming and uh yeah also you can get one of these cool t-shirts encounter wargaming t-shirts from spreadshirt down below all that stuff goes to support the channel um something that we're doing too for all of our patrons we give exclusive perks just for you and sometimes exclusive content so stay tuned for all of that um guys that's it for today we will see you at our next encounter Like a monkey in a rocket on his way back home. Okay.